somebody like a copy of God's Word. It is uh, offered to you uh, here, here this afternoon, freely. If there any cost and any obligation to you, sir, you'd like one. The Word of God, of course, um, is um, so very, so very important, you know, that uh, it's the only instruction manual available to us to um, uh, reveal things divine to us, you know, um, knowledge of God, knowledge of yourself, you know, what you are truly like, the rock from which you are hewn, and uh, of course to bring you to, hopefully, uh, this is the end of the matter, uh, to bring you to faith, that is to believe these things are written, written down, God has committed wholly to writing that which he would have us to know. And of course, uh, it is, uh, as the Bible itself says, infallible, because inspired of God, and uh, therefore reliable. Uh, the only writing, of course, really, that is reliable, uh, that you can trust, not the mutterings, incoherent uh, mumblings of other uh, religious bodies and uh, organizations, but uh, the Bible, the Bible alone is the Word of God, Word of God written, and it's offered freely to you here this afternoon, a copy of the New Testament in its entirety, uh, yours for the taking freely and without any obligation to you. Read and uh, be instructed in the things of God. In the Bible, of course, you'll find what uh, is uh, is referred to as known as the, the Ten Commandments. There's ten of them, and they are a summary, it's not the entirety, but it's a, a summary of God's law, the law of uh, which is summed up in the words of Jesus, Jesus Christ, the only Savior. Uh, he says uh, the law of God is summed up in this, that we should love God and that we should love our neighbor. And of course the fact is that we have done neither, none of us, and so therefore we are all guilty before God, and we are in need of being rescued, saved from the guilt of that sin, from the transgression itself, and of course from its ultimate consequences. That's why God, in his loving kindness and great mercy, sent his son Jesus Christ into the world. But the Bible, you see, of course, is the record of all that. You see, without the Bible, it's absolutely necessary, friends. Without the Bible, you see, you cannot know God intimately, lovingly, and forgivingly. Oh, you know that God is, we all do. Uh, you look at uh, the created order, and of course, well, even there you see a testimony to man's fallenness, because you see, even your environment is hostile against you. You come out in a lovely, beautiful spring morning and you look at uh, the created order and you say, oh yes, there must be a God. But then autumn comes and things start to decay and then winter comes and everything's absolutely dead, you know. Or you're flying across the, uh, the Atlantic Ocean and an elect electric storm hits your aircraft and it plunges into the Atlantic Ocean. Are you swimming in the water of Australia and a shark bites you to death, you know? It's a testimony. The created order, you see, is a, a revelation of the wrath of God because of man's sin. But the Bible, you see, all this, um, well, because you see, because we have sinned, you know? We've broken God's law, but not just that, we're sinners by nature because of Adam's sin, our first parent, his sin, you see. He began to get children in his own likeness, his own sinful likeness, and down through the generations it goes, and so we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Sinful nature, sinful practice, the whole shebang, we're all shot through, in thought, in word, and in action. So that's why you need a saviour. But of course, in case uh, you're not convinced of that, the law is given to us, the commandments of God to teach us, you know, what manner of sinners it is that we truly, really are. By the law is the knowledge of sin. 
And the law, as I said, is summed up in those Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There's only one God. There can only be one God. Else they will be fighting one another uh, for supremacy. Friends, there's only one God, one creator, one lawgiver, one judge, and one who would save you. And that's the God of the Bible, the God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the true and living God. And his law is summed up here. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Uh, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. And thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Uh, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And so it goes on, you see. Those first four commandments given to us are all, you see, our duty towards God. But then there follows another six. Because remember, the Son of God's law, according to Jesus, love for God, that's the first four, and then love for your neighbor, that's the remaining six, you see? And the first of those six says this, that uh, honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now you see, that's not just about your natural parents. Of course it is. To, uh, not to obey your parents, not to honor, not to reverence, not to respect your parents. Young people, are you listening to this? Uh, not to um, respect your parents, but then that includes adults too, with very elderly parents. Parents, you see, are to be respected by their children. If you have not done that, all of your days, you know, and all of your family life, then that makes you a breaker of that commandment along with all the others. And you might say, well, you know, I kept one of those. Maybe I broke in one or two, you know, or maybe, maybe you would claim you've only just broken one. But the Bible says if you've broken one, you've broken them all because you see the unity of God's commands binds them all together and the unity that holds them all together is love, you see, because it was in love that God gave us those commandments for our protection, our instruction, our knowledge, that we might come to realize just what kind of rotten, rotten sinners we are and how we need to be forgiven and how we can be pointed to and led to Jesus Christ and know the forgiveness of our sins, be right with God and, of course, fit one day for heaven. So like I say, it's not just your natural parents, but of course um, anyone, really, anyone who is superior to you in authority. Governors, school teachers, and so on. But of course it does, it does, you know. You see, if you don't learn this commandment, and you don't learn to obey this commandment, when you're young, you know, alongside your natural parents, well, you're going to be in trouble when it comes to any authority at all. And I dare say, as you look at our society today, and you see the rebellious attitude, the anti-authoritarian attitude amongst young people. Not all of them, thank you, uh, thankfully, but, but many of them. They uh, exist, you know, in the most rebellious, awful, disrespecting way. Uh, towards their natural parents. And it's little wonder that when they get to the, the dizzy heights of their teens, it's uh, little wonder, you know, that they don't obey uh, schoolmasters, that they don't obey the police, the courts, uh, the state, or anybody else, let alone God. But you see, if you don't learn this in your youth to obey God's commandment, and this one in particular, to honor thy father and mother, if you don't reverence your natural parents, you certainly will not reverence God. But maybe for some of us who are a bit older, maybe perhaps we did not teach our children such a commandment. Perhaps maybe we neglected our duty in this matter. Then that makes us just as guilty as hell as the children themselves in their rebellious attitudes and anti-authoritarian status. So honor 
thy father and mother, you see, it becomes, when you begin to think about the outworking of this commandment and disregard of it, well, the implications for, for men and women, individuals, for families, and of course, well, for a society at large, and the world at large even, well, the implications, I tell you, are far-reaching, far, far-reaching. So it's all an authority, you know, not just family, uh, the church and the state, the government. As long as that is, of course, you know, that family members, you know, natural parents are not telling you, commanding you to go against what God has revealed, or the church for that matter, because all can be wrong, and of course the state, the government too. I mean, in our own day and generation, we find our own government legislating for things that are totally contrary to the Word of God. So when it comes to that, you see, well, the state, I'm afraid, has to be resisted. God's Word, you see, God's commandment, this is the supreme authority, the ultimate authority. It has to be, friends. Otherwise, you see, you deny that this is the Word of God you deny that this is God's divinely inspired word, then, well, you're left with no ultimate authority. It's anybody's authority, you know? The state's authority, but which one? Russia's, America's, Britain's, who's? You know? Your opinion, my opinion, his opinion, her opinion. Who says it's wrong to murder? Why is it wrong to murder? Well, evolution says it's not wrong. Evolution says it's okay to murder. Evolution says that's survival of the fittest. Evolution says it's okay, by implication I mean, says it's okay for a man to rape a woman. Why? Survival of the fittest. You have no, no basis. You have no justifiable basis in evolution for ethics or morality for any standard. So if you're an evolutionist, if you're an atheist so-called, you know, when people come burgling your house, when people come raping your wife, when people come murdering you, you've got no complaint. It's just survival of the fittest. And, well, I guess you need to learn to be the stronger. But you see, friends, you've got no ultimate authority. You've got no power base. If you deny that the Bible is the Word of God, that the commands are fully authoritative from God, his inspired word. It is the ultimate authority, you see. It saves us, you see, from squabbling together. Who says it's wrong to murder your parents? Who says it's wrong for you to lie? Who says it's wrong for you to rebel against your teachers, against all authority? No, not your parents, not the state, God and God alone. Honor thy father and mother. Respect, reverence, you see, for those in authority over you, so long, of course, as long as they are not going and commanding contrary to the Word of God. But it's a reverence, don't you know? Not just outwardly. Well, you know, I'll do what she tells me, but I don't like it. It's a reverence in the heart, you see. You have not obeyed the commandment unless you have done it from the heart with love in your heart for your parents, for the authority. But this you cannot do because you're a fallen sinner. You do not have love in your heart. You do not have love for God. You do not have love for your neighbor because you were conceived and born in sin. So this is impossible with you. You might say, well, I'll do it, you know. I'll get my teeth, I'll get my tongue between my teeth, and I won't say a word, and I'll do what they tell me, but oh, I'll do with grinding teeth. That's not obeying the commandment, any of the commandments. You see, their very basis is love. If it's not done in love, it has to be done inwardly as well as outwardly. Honor thy mother, honor, honor thy father and thy mother. And of course, in word too, how you speak, how you speak of the authority. Friends, are we not all guilty, yourself and myself alike? Are we not all guilty? Have we not all spoken 
and do we not even do it? Maybe we've even done it today, spoken against authority. Parents, natural parents, the state, the schoolmaster, the policeman, disrespect, you see, in word, maybe cussing them even, and who knows, maybe cussing them in God's name, in the name of Jesus Christ. That would be blasphemy as well, would it not? Don't you see, friends? We're all guilty to a man, to a woman. There's none of us escape. There's none of us honored father and mother as we ought to do in heart and word. And of course, indeed, too, it means obeying. It means actually doing. When father says, do this, you do it. You do it with love in your heart. And of course, um, when the state, when the church, when the policeman, when the court, whoever it be, who God has placed in authority over you says do this a lawful command it is for you to do to obey do this and live says God but again dear friends we've not all done it none of us have done it we've all broken God's commandments every single one of them trashed them under foot guilty to a man to a woman and in need of God's rescue plan, in need of God's redemption. But you see, this is what the commandments were given for. To point us, you see, to show us our sin, and to point us to the one that we need, even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came into the world to die on a cross, that you might be forgiven, and that you might be made right with God. That's the ultimate purpose, you see, of those commandments given to us. And then, of course, it's a willing obedience to God's lawful commandments. Willing. Willing, you see. But, of course, not willing to obey any authority in this Archean generation in our land, is it not? Not willing at all to obey authority. We don't like it. You know, the... We put a sign up in the grass and we, it says, you know, you shall not walk on the grass. And what happens? Five minutes later, everybody's walking all over the grass. It's a natural thing to do because we're natural born sinners. We got this rebellious streak in us. And so help us, you know. It's just, um, it's just a natural bias, a natural bent, you know, to go against authority. Don't get, go against that which is right. We defy the law. And we defy the law, the commandments of God. We defy this commandment of God and therefore stand guilty before God, not willing to give God the obedience that He demands. Submission to corrections, you know? That's one of the things that the Bible's given to us for, it says, to correct us to reprove us, tell us off, and sometimes we need to be told off, don't we? All of us. But nobody likes to be told off, but that's what the Word of God does. You read for yourself and see, and I tell you, it won't be long before you find something touching your heart, something you don't like, something that makes you to prickle, you know, because you're being reproved, you're being told what a nasty, vile person you are. Here you are thinking you were good. Here, here you are thinking you were the best dude in the school. And you learn to your dismay and disappointment that God says you have a heart deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, that you're absolutely vile, depraved. It's an approval of God's word, but given to us also to correct us. To correct us. Those commandments, you see, they govern the man's conscience, whoever he be, religious or otherwise, no matter what his religion be, this is the word of God, commandments of God. And they're given to correct us, to show us where we're wrong. Your conscience is not fallible sometimes. You can be suffering from guilt, but it may be a false guilt. Your conscience perhaps needs to be educated. So you say, well, how can my conscience be educated? When you come to God's commandments, they'll educate you. But they'll reprove you. They'll tell you when you're wrong. 
and they'll correct you, that is, if you are willing to be corrected, and of course, uh, to instruct you in the way of righteousness, to teach you, again, you see, this is the sum of the matter, it's a schoolmaster, it's a school tom, done with school, I don't want to go back there, you see, but you have to, it's God's school. The schoolmaster to teach you what kind of a sinner you are and how much that you desperately, desperately need Jesus as your Savior. It's in love that God gave you these commandments, just as in love He gave His only begotten Son to die on a cross that you might be delivered from your lawless deeds, your law-breaking ways, and that you might be reproved, corrected, and instructed in the way of righteousness. And of course, the way of righteousness is through God's Son, Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Him. And of course, content for God's commandments, you see, oh, it's rash. Oh, no, you see, this is rubbish. That's holding God in contempt. That's blasphemy again. That's taking the name of the Lord thy God in vain contempt, rebellion against God's commandments, honor thy father and mother, that is contempt, that is rebellion. And it's because of your iniquities, your rebellion against God, that you're separated from God in time now and will be for all eternity if you don't get saved, if you're not born again, if you don't repent, if you don't believe the gospel, lost and lost forever. If you go on in your contemptuous attitude and rebellion against your Maker, against the Almighty, then of course the government, the state, can be just as unlawful as anybody else with his legislation for things that are unlawful, contrary to God. And of course to obey such as that would be to sin. It would be better for you were they to put you in jail for you to obey uh, their enactments, you know, because it's not really legislation, it's not really lawful, it's only an enactment. If it's contrary to God's word, contrary to God's commandments, contrary to what God has revealed. So you see, friends, uh, there is a time, there is a place when you have to obey God rather than the state. And you have to let them lock you up. And maybe, as it is in some countries today, such as Saudi Arabia, um, and other countries too, where you would maybe even be taught <laughs> for resisting the powers of the state. But you only obey the state as far as God's word permits you to. The state, you see, can be guilty of this commandment, honor thy father and mother, in demanding of its citizens, commanding its citizens, that which is unlawful, contrary, that is, to God's commandments, God's word. The state, you see, is not to seek its own will. The state, you see, is placed there by God. Any government in any country is there by God's authority and is there, of course, not to seek its own end not to seek its own agenda, as it were, not there for its own profit. You know, as we find many politicians in many parts of the world today, they just seem to be filling their own pockets with more and more of your money and my money. A democracy? No, I think we live in a kleptocracy. They're a bunch of thieves, you know with all this taxation, even down to local government, here in Stoke and Trent. All the money that they steal out of our pockets. That's not what they're in government for. That's not what the authority has been given to them for. Not to seek their own, not, to, not for their own profit, not for their own gain, and not for their own glory, not to glory in sin, but to glorify God, to obey God. So those who do not obey the authority, honor father and mother, they are guilty of sin, and they are worthy of death as a result of that. But then the state, the authorities, father and mother, 
a church or state who commands of those who are their inferiors of that which is unlawful in God's sight, they are just as guilty of this commandment too. It cuts both ways, you see. God gives us commandments to protect us all, not just those in higher power, but those as common folk, as street merchants too. And then, of course, um, when the state commands that which is just outright evil, outright evil with its injustices and with its all its legislation for such uncleanness, which is almost unmentionable in the streets amongst fair men and women today. Friends, what can we say about such a government as we have today? I have to say, friends, held out to a man or woman. So they need to be saved. We need to pray for those in authority over us. We're commanded to do that also. Pray for them that God would grant them repentance, that God would grant them faith, that God would humble them. Mrs. May, the Queen, her cabinet members, members of parliament, local councillors, that God would humble such. But you too, you too, because you too are guilty of breaking this commandment of God. Honor thy father and mother. Friends, we are all guilty of breaking every one of these commandments. Every one of us. From the top of society to the bottom. All guilty. Religious, irreligious. It matters not, friends. And may I tell you, friends, religion is not the answer. Religion will not save. Religion will not put you right with God. Religion will not bring forgiveness from God. Religion will not get you favor with God. Religion will not get you anything from God at all. It will not put the life of God into your soul, the love of God into your heart. It will not change your desires. It will not make you want to obey God's commandments. The contrary, friends, it will harden you, make you more cynical. No, friend, it's a man you need, the man Christ Jesus. It's a savior. It's Jesus Christ that you need. It's a person that you need. You need to be born again. You need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Your guilt needs to be atoned for. Your shame removed. Your sin, your rebellion, your anarchy quelled. Miraculously changed by the power of Jesus Christ. How you doing, guys? Yeah, are you Christian? You're a Christian, man? Huh? You're not? I'm Catholic. Oh, yeah. You're not. Why, why, not? why are you not? Why not? I'm a Sophiest. I'm a Sophiest. Oh, really? What's one of them? What? Say that again? I think he exists, but I don't think he's good. What? what, what? Tell me again. What did you call it? The Sophiest. Oh, what is that? What is that? What is it? What is it? The thing is, it means you believe God exists. Yeah, that, that's a well. That's, that's a wicked. That's a wicked. That's a wicked thought to begin with, because the Bible says God is good. Listen, why doesn't it make sense? Come a bit closer. Come a bit closer, please. Why would God, who is is God omnipotent? Yeah. Yeah. If God is omnipotent, He's not bound by anything, including logic. So you're saying that God is subject to logic? He says to you. He says, he, says, he says to you in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, Come now and let us reason together. Because God made you a rational creature. God is completely rational. And he requires you to be completely rational. But you're not because you're right. your reason is fallen. I think you've misunderstood what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if God himself is subject or guided or limited by logic, that would mean he has limitations and therefore isn't omnipotent. No, no, no. God's the creator of logic. Exactly. He's the creator. He gave us the gift of logic. Exactly. So, so where, do you get, where, do you get, where does the law of logic come from? God. Huh? God yeah. made yeah. logic. So, so, you, believe, so you, you accept that there is a God? Yes. You? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, how do you know what he's like? You say he's not good. Well, how do you I know assume, that? 
How do you know that? Well, because the world he made isn't fully good. That's fallen. Fallen. It was good in the beginning. It's fallen. Man fell into sin, and the whole creation is cursed. I was just saying earlier on to the people, even your even your environment is hostile against yeah. you because of man's sin. Yeah. You go to Australia, a snake or a shark will bite you. You yeah. fly across the Atlantic, a boat of lightning hits the airplane and you yeah. crash yeah. into the Atlantic. Yet the whole of creation, yeah, in its fallen state, testifies against your rebellion, your sin against God. Yeah? You can't know God, you can't look at creation and, and tell me what God is like. Because it's fallen, it's fallible. Yeah? You have you need you need an infallible record. You need a testimony from God as to what he's like. And that's given to you in the Bible and the Bible alone. You won't even get it from the Pope, madam. Only oh, from yeah. the Bible. Only from the Bible. The Bible, the Bible, yeah, no. sir. Nothing shows your faith in God like four inches of bulletproof glass. That's nonsense. No, I'm talking about the Pope. That's nonsense. Have you ever read the Bible? No, I'm talking about the Pope. Have you ever, have you ever read the Bible? Yeah, Mum's got loads. Have you? Yeah. Uh, oh, King well, James, I believe. Forget one of them. No, I've got all sleep. That's a King James. That's a King James. Yeah. No, no. Superior. I was talking about the Pope. <laughs> That's my passion. I was talking yeah. specifically about the Pope because you mentioned him. Well, we're not talking about him. That's religion. That's oh, religion. Yeah. That's religion. Thank you. That's religion. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's religion. Yeah. It's Jesus that you need. What's your first name? Daniel. Daniel. Read Daniel in the Old Testament. He was a good guy. Listen, listen, Daniel, read the word of God for yourself. That's that's God's revelation. That tells you what God is like. And don't come back and tell me he's not good. Because he is in the Old Testament, he actually does say, I create evil. I create fortune, I create calamity. That, that's providence. That's just talking about providence. You have to learn what it means, what the word means, Daniel. He's talking about bad providence. There are bad providences. Why are there bad providences? Because you live in a fallen world. You live in a world that's out of sync with God. That's why. Why does he allow that to happen? Why does he allow that? Man's, oh, man's responsibility is man that brought sin into the world. Does a free will. Pardon? Does a free will. He doesn't have free will anymore. The only, will, the only freedom you've got to sin, Daniel. Yeah, I know. Until Jesus Christ sets you free. Until Jesus Christ sets you free. It's not religion you need. It's Jesus you need. It's the Son of God you need. God is good. God so loved the world He gave His only begotten Son. That is goodness. That is goodness beyond anything you ever dreamed of, Daniel. Considering that God is omnipotent, just giving off some human documents is a very cheap miracle. Cheap? That is blasphemy. That is blasphemy to the utmost. That is blasphemy to the utmost. That is dreadful, Daniel. You really do need to get educated. Ah, read the Bible, Daniel, please. God, when you compare it to God's omnipotence and everything is in, must be infinitely easy for God to do. Uh-huh. Save you. Yeah. And he's done everything he possibly could. He's provided you with everything he could possibly do to get you back to him. And his desire is that you should be back with him. As surely as I live, saith the Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked. That is, that men die in their sin, even you but that you should live. Come, come, come. He says, why will you die when you can live, when you can have eternal life? Daniel, why you're... Why doesn't he tell me? You're... Read yourself and see. He's left his word. Yes. Read and see. Daniel, you are in a state of rebellion, son. That is just... Rebellion, son. Rebellion. Rebellion. Well, you never will until you believe. You, can, you don't you don't understand to believe, you have to believe to understand. When you believe, then you'll understand. Submission, surrender to God is what's required of you. To what? No, no, no. No, no. no, no. There is no such a thing as faith. It's God's providence. No, definitely not. Because God, you see, is an intimate, caring, loving being. That you cannot find anywhere, that knowledge you cannot get anywhere but in the Bible. So come back again, read the Bible, Daniel. Okay. Read the Bible. Okay, King James, yes. Yes, but anyone you like, any one you choose, that is the best. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Satan's running out of time now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, time is short, time is short. Yeah, I believe she's only got about a year and a half.
Ah, oh, Daniel, 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 Daniel. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Yeah. Have a good day, guys. Eh? Yeah, you too. Nice talking to you. Yeah, it's nice to meet somebody. Okay. Like I said, if you want to take me, Thank you. Just have in the no, 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 you don't mean that. You don't mean that, son. You do not mean that. Friends, like I say, it's a person that you need, and his name is Jesus, and he came into the world to save sinners like you and I, that we might humble ourselves under his mighty hand, that we might acknowledge our rebellion, our uh, breaking of his commandments, of which we just had a, an excellent example of a rebellious, anarchist attitude towards the Almighty, towards God, towards authority. These are the things you see. Pardon? Pardon? There's only one son. There's only one. You got the Bible. Yeah. Read the Bible, son. Read the Bible. Like I say, friends, it's the answers. You know, all the answers are here. The ones that you need. The Word of God. Law of God. The Gospel of God. The law that drives the man to Jesus Christ. And the Gospel that draws men in God's love to into the arms of the only Savior, Almighty God, Triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Father who sent the Son, and the Son who came in perfect obedience to His Father, showing you an example of what it means to keep this commandment, honor thy father and mother. He came and He obeyed to the letter, out of a heart full, brimming with love for His Father, accomplishing redemption, salvation for men and women such as you and I. Oh, read God's word. He cannot lie. He is the Holy Lord. Repent ye and believe the gospel, Hanley. Repent ye and believe the gospel for the kingdom of God is at hand. You'd like a copy of God's word? Gladly please one into your hand. Free, no cost or obligation to you. You would like one, please feel free to come and ask for one. May God bless you and have mercy upon your precious, never-dying soul. I don't think you can reason much with that. Mm -hmm. Huh? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Great example of uh, irrationality for any reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they yeah. could call rationalism.